Hello folks, I'm Tom Shields looking at Coyote Hockey and a weekend that is one to quickly forget. It's not often that a Soyuz does lose two games on a weekend, so I don't expect Coach Ken Law and his assistants Carl Poole, Brandon Watson, and Terry Martin to be hitting any panic button. In North Okanagan, Knights coach Bryant Perrier played a real defensive style of hockey and sealed off the net, allowing the Coyotes only 22 shots on goal and just six shots in the third period. Sometimes that system works up in North Okanagan when they play the Coyotes. Sometimes it doesn't. It did on Friday. Saturday night, the local crowd got off its feet early at the Sun Bowl Arena in the game against Summerland. As Austin Cleaver and Colin Bell got the puck to Ryan Roseboom in the slot, he one-timed it past team goaltender Matthew Huber a mere 21 seconds into the game, and it was the first shot on goal. Now, even though that goal was scored at the four-second mark, Jarrett Malchow of this team gave a stinging check to one of the Coyotes right by the Coyote bench. Hey, that sort of set the tone for the steam. Now, the final score was 7-2, to two, but the game was really much closer than that. The Coyotes down 5-2 to two with three minutes remaining at a power play. And they pulled goaltender Adam Jones for the extra attacker. The steam, though, put it down the ice into the dead center of a gaping net. Then with eight seconds to go, a loose puck came to the blue line, and Paulson Letard, who played a few games for the Yotes two years ago, fired an absolute screamer that went just inside the post in the top corner stick side, and hey, it could have been Carey Price in goal, and he wouldn't have stopped that rocket. Once Summerland tied the game in the first period, they had the edge in play. The Coyotes had one of those games where passes weren't connecting. It became evident as the game went on that the steam had the upper hand in play, and the Coyotes became a little ragged. Credit has to go to the visitors. They played an excellent road game, were very effective with their four checks. It's exactly the same sort of game you sue you usually plays when they are on the road. Summerland, meanwhile, added another two points Sunday afternoon with a convincing 7 to 1 win over Sycamus. The team also have a midweek game up in Armstrong against the North Okanagan Knights. Coyotes need to be back on stride for Friday night as they're up in Kelowna taking on the Chiefs, and it was just two weeks ago that the atom bomb went off during the second period and fist as cuffs and suspensions all took place. Then the following night, more frustration for Kelowna here at Asuyus. Though there's no doubt that revenge will be on the Chiefs' mind, not to mention they are just a point behind Asuyus and five behind Summerland, who sit with 26. Coyotes, four points behind Summerland at 22, with two games in hand, and the Chiefs have won. Saturday night, the Princeton Posse ride into town for a 7.35 face-off with the Coyotes. Then the last time these two teams met in October, Posse beat the Coyotes 5-3 in Princeton. Saturday night's game is sponsored by the Incomeat Cellars Winery at the Spirit River Resort. And an intermission, they will feature a cork toss surprises and an ice wine box target shoot. Then at the second intermission, once we have the fresh ice, Janet and Craig Tucker of McDonald Real Estate's Rubber Duck Toss Jackpot will be at $550. Last week, someone rimmed the bowl, then the duck went askew in the same manner that the puck was treating the coyotes last Saturday night. I'm Tom Shields on the Coyotes and the KIJHL on Coyote. Stone again down in the zone.